Dear Father, please, my heart is aching. Took a lot out of me to run from Satan. Everything I sold, everything I taken. But this life I know, this life I know it. Yeah. This life I know, this life I know it. Yeah. You better watch your soul, keep one eye open. They say I'm chosen, say I'm chosen. Boy, you better watch me close, my water frozen. Welcome to the second installment of your favorite podcast and show, For the Love of God. I'm your host, Sarah Blair, and today we have our amazing guest. I like to call him E2K, mm -hmm. but, you know, everyone might know him as Ezra. Yes. Right? Ezra Blair. Ezra yeah. Blair. Mm -hmm. But, of course, his stage name is E2K. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be on this show? Uh, feels good, man. Feels good, you know. I'm excited about this new year, mm -hmm. uh, you know, excited about some upcoming projects good. and, um, you know, trying to make moves. Good, <laughs> good. I'm glad. <laughs> I, I'm so happy to uh, have you here. I'm mm -hmm. excited to see what those projects are going to be looking like. Yeah. So our first segment of today, okay. you get this, All is right. called Under the Bushel. Okay. All right. And this is me putting you on to stuff or mm -hmm. things kind of, you know, kind of low key. People aren't really talking about it. I'm not really seeing it anywhere, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of putting my stamp on approval on it. Like, this is really good. Okay. So this week's <laughs> Under the Bushel, it's Atlanta. Okay. And no, I'm not talking about the city. Mm -mm. I'm talking about the show. The show. Yes. Okay, yeah. By Donald Glover. Okay. And it's about a rapper in Atlanta mm -hmm. named Paperboy who's managed by his cousin, Earn. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of trying to just make it in the, the rapping world, the music world. Yeah. And right now in the season, they're in like Europe, touring, things like that. But it's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so funny. It's have hilarious. you have you seen it? You've yeah, seen I've seen it? Atlanta. I'm a fan of Atlanta. I'm a big fan of Atlanta. Okay. That's always one of those shows you can you can throw on. Yeah. And like you'll enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'll definitely yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. And I I love that it has like social commentary in yeah. it. Like the last episode, if you guys seen it in the past week, very heavily social social commentary. It mm -hmm. was almost like it was so funny. Yeah. I I think that's one thing I admire about Atlanta mm -hmm. is how like effortlessly they're able to um have the social commentary right. in there right. while maintaining like a comedic stance. Right. But it's funny because I feel like even a lot of like the comedy in it, it's not necessarily like funny. It's almost like so real mm -hmm. that it's funny. Yes. If that makes sense. Like especially like as black like just it talks about like the black perspective a mm -hmm. lot. And so a lot of like the black perspectives that like it kind of gives off on the show. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like, oh wow, like I relate to that so much that it's hilarious. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like Donald Glover does a really good job yeah. of like like connecting with us on like a very human level, yeah. like just being a very good observer, observer, observer of what's going on and being mm -hmm. able to like interpret that into the screen yeah. for other viewers to be like, wait a second. Like I know exactly what that feels yeah, like yeah. to be in that situation. Like, I mean, some parts are like, of course, like hyperbolized, but like for the most part though, I feel like it does like a really good job of um, being funny having a storyline, mm -hmm. and also just maintaining interest. Like, it's yeah. a very interesting show to watch. Yeah, it's so yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, good. Well, check out Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I believe it's on, like, all streaming services, and let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 definitely check it out. It's yeah. so funny. The next segment of today's show, um, I'm going to kind of have you do it with me. Okay. It's two words, two um, words. but it's, like, one word, like, repeated. Okay. Okay, you okay. don't have to know what the, what the word is? Two words, but one word repeated? Yeah, it's it's like you say it twice, but it's the same word. Okay, okay. Okay, you want to okay. know what the word is? What's the word? Word. Word? It's word. Word, word? Yeah. Okay. But you say it differently. So the first one's kind of like a question, like word, and then the other one, the statement, word. Word? Yeah. Okay. All right, you ready to do it with me? Okay. I go first, and you go second. Okay. Okay, ready? Okay. Word. 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 Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm trying to understand the game. <laughs> I mean, okay. That's it. Oh, that's it's the game? word. Yes. Oh, okay. word? Word? Yes. Word? word. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, did I win? Yeah. Okay. No, you won. You okay. won. Um, <laughs> you word. won something. Word. I'll, I'll tell you at the end of the show what word. you won. I'll take it. I'll yeah. Take it. I'll take the word. Word. But word, word, word is a segment I'm talking about, you know, the word. The, <laughs> <laughs> the word. Just, word. you know, what was going on mm -hmm. as far as um, lessons these past this past week. Okay. 
Right. Okay. So, you know, the Bible's the word, the word is the word. Right. There the you word. go. This week, we had the gift of giving back with Jeffrey and you, Ezra. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yes. <laughs> you forgot about that. Right. <laughs> exactly. I should have you be doing this part. <laughs> <laughs> but in the episode, um, you guys talked about how with the new year kind of brings the energy of giving back mm-hmm. um, to this nation and our God and our brethren. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically the whole notion of giving back and what that means and looks like as an Israelite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So very informative. You want to yeah. add anything as a, as <laughs> I a feel like I'm really, I feel presenter. like I said a lot on it. <laughs> it was about like an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, as Sarah was saying, it's really kind of just about like kind of the perspective of like analyzing like a lot of like the people in the Bible mm-hmm. and like their stories and like the stuff they went through mm-hmm. and like how they still through that chose to like give back mm-hmm. uh to whether it was their nation or to the god of Israel, both i think they're simultaneous right and um uh and yeah and then also kind of thinking about how we can do that today right because like they, they had a different type of foundation to start with right but um so how does that like what does that look like in 2022 so i feel like it kind of just starts with like kind of like analyzing yourself and analyzing your own life and like what you can provide or give like what are your gifts and talents right what can be your role what's something you could add i feel like everyone kind of that's more like an internal discussion i feel like you kind of need to have it yourself or the people close to you who who uh, who know you right Mm -hmm. awesome Mm -hmm. well definitely check that out on the israelite nation worldwide ministries youtube Mm -hmm. uh to just hear more from this you know young person who's who's obviously knows what he's talking about (laughs) (laughs) so check that out and also check out the saturday lesson um from priest doreen and elder andal outlining our passover going over passages in the scripture that you know talks about our laws And discussing the instructions given to us by the God of Israel on how to, you know, partake in the Passover. All right. So let's hop on to our next segment. It is called What's Poppin'? What's Poppin'? What's Poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Just like that. (laughs) So this segment is kind of just about, you know, what's happening in the world today, what's popular, what can we talk about? And can you, you know, with the week we've had, with the couple weeks we've had, can you okay. imagine kind of what the topics are? You have a little, like, idea? Because there was one that was huge. It was uh, everywhere. Yeah. So you got the, uh, you got the Will Smith the Will Smith. <laughs> the <laughs> smack curl heard uh, around the world. Yeah. The greatest man on television. The, <laughs> <laughs> the quoted <laughs> Chris yeah. Rock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So if you don't know, if you live under a rock, Will Smith at the most recent Oscars, um, slapped Chris Rock across the face. Yeah. He actually went on stage after a he, what he said was an inappropriate joke, um, and slapped him across the face. It wasn't that inappropriate. Of a joke. It wasn't okay. That's that was a very soft. <laughs> like, in my opinion, like, that was a very soft joke. That's the type of yeah. joke you like tell to your sister. Or something. <laughs> like, that's not even. That's not even like a real. It's definitely not given some of the jokes that I've heard before. It's definitely not like it's Chris Rock. He could have yeah. definitely I mean, gone way harsher than he did. I mean, like they have this is the Oscars. Like, you yeah. know, like the type of jokes they tell at the Oscars is almost supposed to be just like a easygoing, family friendly yeah. jokes. Yeah. And I feel like the joke completely matched that tone. Right. But I think, you know, we'll we'll kind of take it way differently. I right. Know. He <laughs> took it way differently. And, I mean, people are arguing that he was defending his his wife. I mean, no, the I'm joke a, was something said about, I'm you know, Jada's hair. Argument. I'm not a fan of that argument. You're not a fan of that argument? Why? No, no, I'm, not I'm not a fan of that argument because I feel like, I mean, like, it's like we all taking jokes. It, I don't think it had anything specifically to do with, like, I think they're trying to, like, quote unquote it like protect black women mm-hmm. and like I'm all for protecting black women but I don't think that's how you do it <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how you do it at all yeah you think he there was a better way to handle that of course better way to handle it like, yeah if, if, the, if the joke truly took if you truly took offense to the joke mm-hmm. then that's something like especially since like we're both in like the Hollywood scene right we're both like we've definitely like seen and worked along with each other in different ways right, right. Um, and especially as two like big black representatives of you know what I mean? Like, of us as yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Like, to be on that big of a stage and to kind of, like, I don't know, make you fool yourself in that big of a way was just not the way. Like, the best way is, like, afterwards, man to man, be like, yo, I take offense to that joke. Right. My wife doesn't like to talk about that. So I was like, okay. Then Chris kind of been like, word, you'll never hear that again. Right. It would have been that easy. But right. 
Yeah, I think Will just is kind of he has he has some unsettled emotions I think going on. In his yeah, head. that's that's my thoughts. I think it definitely brought to light that there's some underlying problems, maybe yeah. with him and himself, maybe him and his marriage. I think the I think the Smith family has some issues. Yeah, yeah. I I think just going back to the Oscars in general, I think. This was the first Oscars mm-hmm. that was all black producers. Mm. This was it was led by a black yeah, man. Um, I forgot his name. Right? <laughs> it's the worst timing. Yeah. Like going to the Oscars, you know what this means yeah. for the black community. And, and also just realizing, like, if that I mean, only like, there's a couple of things I feel like. One thing is like the fact that Chris Rock was another black man. Mm-hmm. The only reason why Will Smith felt okay to do that. Right. If he was, I, if right. he was a white man, I don't think Will, Will, Will would have done that. Yeah. Um, and then also the fact that they did not cut to um, commercial <laughs> or cut or try and yeah. understand what was going on. Like the fact that they kept it pushing yeah. and even like applauded and what, like whatever. Like I feel like that's a, that was another factor I think of um, being black because I feel like if there was a, if, if that was like a, like a big white actor, like if that was like Leonardo DiCaprio or something, right. like that, they would have cut a bunch of commercial because they're trying to protect Leonardo's brand. Right. right? But no one was protecting anybody's brand. Right. Um, and security just standing there. Hmm. Um, so I, I mean, I feel like the whole thing was kind of just a big mess. Right. Yeah. I definitely think it's a mess. And like, and I don't try and like, I don't like the way that social media is trying to flip it positive. Hmm. I don't think it's not like. I think people are just getting soft. <laughs> like if something is wrong, it's wrong. As a society, <laughs> yeah. I think that um, to like like we were talking about how it kind of highlights the issues in their marriage. Mm. I think that you know there's definitely it's becoming clearer and more clear how toxic their their relationship is. Of course. And this is definitely just a turning point in that. Mm. Um, what do we think? Like as an Israelite, an Israelite man, how do you interpret the situation as far as like was it simply a man protecting his queen or is it an example of toxic masculinity is this something that we approve of in the as, Israelite nation as an Israelite man you need to make sure that you wear some pants in your relationship because <laughs> I feel like what's going on is she's running the whole shebang yeah and I feel like I feel like as an Israelite man you have to have purpose mm-hmm. and you need to be focused on your goals and you can't let your family life or whatever's troubling on that side disrupt that. Right. And I think that night was a representation of letting bad personal life things affect what was supposed to be a really good night for him. Right. Right. So it, yeah, that's my. Yeah, is yeah. this you think is an example of how like black men not really knowing how to be men um, in our community? I think that I, I think that is a thing. I I I, um, I mean we I mean, we know that's been a thing for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially you know making sure you have, you know, good family structure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think, I think men need to be men. <laughs> and um, I don't think you should fall for, like, the society trying to tell men to, like, like calm it down or, I don't know, like, to not be a man. Right. Like, I feel like men need to be men. Right. Um, and I feel like when you feel, like, not like a man, it can, like, mess you up emotionally. Right. And mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. I mean that, you know, men need space to, to, to act in a way that, yeah. you know, they feel um, kind of like protectors, things yeah. like that. But men being men does not mean you just fight people for no reason like Cat Will did. Yeah. That's not a man being a man. That's a man emotionally hurt and not sure exactly how to direct that pain. Yeah. So I feel like he needs therapy. So yeah. That'd be my advice. Okay. Good. You heard mm-hmm. it here first from the mouth of Ezra, <laughs> E2K, mm-hmm. what he thinks about the situation. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, this week, also mm-hmm. what was happening um, in America know, was the appointing of Kentanji Brown jo- Jackson. And I'm, I think I'm botching her first name, Kentanji mm-hmm. Brown Jackson. But mm-hmm. she was uh, the first black female justice um on the Supreme Court. Oh yeah, I saw that. In the news. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, that was- the uh, so that's positive black news, I it think. is positive black yeah. news. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's the first black woman, like I said, on the Supreme Court to hold that position mm-hmm. ever. Since like the 1800s, it's mm-hmm. only been white men. Mm-hmm. There was, I think, two Hispanic females, one black male, and then she's the first ever mm-hmm. black female mm-hmm. to wow. ever hold that position. Wow. Congratulations. 
Right, congratulations, um, Justice Jackson. <laughs> Another thing that is, it's not this week, but it's something that I personally tuned in for this week. Um, for I think it has like three episodes, but okay. the genius Kanye West oh, trilogy, yeah. the, the documentary. Trilogy. Yes, yeah, I, I finally watched it after weeks of hearing the buzz about it. Mm-hmm. And it was so good. Yeah. It, it definitely uh, reached expectations. Yep. Yes, yeah. have you seen it? I think it? it went beyond my expectations. Yes. When I, when I, like, I think watching, and if you haven't watched it, I encourage that you watch um, at least the first episode. At least the first episode. Because once you do, it's going to open up your eyes a little bit yes. to uh, really understand um, why it can be a very impactful right. documentary. Right. And for those who don't know kind of genius and what is it about, it's about rapper, record producer, fashion designer, Kanye West, his life portrayed through a documentary by Cootie. Cuddy? Cootie? Uh, I think it's Cootie. Cootie, right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's talking about from when he first came on the scene as a producer um, to now as mm-hmm. a rapper, artist, everything. Yeah. And uh, we know what Kanye's meant for the culture. Right. I, I mean, songs. hopefully you have con- 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 heard of Actually, Kanye before. I th- think it's probably maybe impossible. To not have heard of Kanye song. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ma- it's possible, but it's very low qual- very Yeah. Low what I love about this documentary is that it um, it describes his setbacks as well as his triumphs. I mean, we mm-hmm. see him as the popular person he is today, mm-hmm. but kind of the journey leading up to that uh, is what unknown, yeah, was at least to me. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And it also expresses and talks about his famous ego or confidence mm-hmm. um, streak that he has. Yeah, his big ego. His big ego. Mm-hmm. And he, you see that kind of he's always been confident um, and you see in this documentary that he gets it from his mother, mm-hmm. right? His mother has always instilled support and confidence into him. Mm, that so he can do anything. Right, that he could do anything, that he could be the best in his field. And you see from a very young age, he's always believed in that. Mm-hmm. And it came to fruition yeah. today that he's the most popular artist out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just it, it was really touching to me to see such a supportive mother yeah. in that, that role in, in yeah. his life. Um, and she instilled this amazing set of confidence in him. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think um, it was really inspirational mm-hmm. um, for anybody, especially going into fields. I mean, I'm going into music, so of course that was a, just a direct, direct was hitting notes, like ex- things that I related to right. 100%. Um, and of course, in his relationship with his mother, like I definitely related to that too. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to, I guess, our mom. <laughs> um, I related to that too. Right. Like that, um, that support that 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 bone, um, um, and I shout out to my dad too, because um, they said we never do. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, I think that like the relationship with that and the relationship with his like his homies, like his friends, the ones that were close. Uh, but I, <coughs> I think another thing is also just like anybody, especially going into like the media mm-hmm. um, or in. Uh, film or anything like that, I feel like I can really find a lot of inspiration or art. Like, I feel like I can find a lot of uh, inspiration from it um, because it's especially hard to go into fields in which there are no rules of how to make it. You know? Right. So, like, music, film, art, like things that maybe is based off of somewhat subjective um, opinion. Mm-hmm. In the um, hustle. Yeah, as it well. takes a lot more. It takes a, I'm going to say more because people work hard in other areas, but. It takes it. It does take a lot of hustle and grind, right? Um, and it takes a high IQ, I'd say too, because a lot of the decisions you have to make kind of have to be forward thinking all, all all the time, right? Because there's no set structure um, into like exactly what needs to happen next, um, and you don't you don't get to wake up and go somewhere and then someone tells you what to do, right? You wake up with an empty plate of a day. And you gotta fill that canvas yourself, right? And like even exactly, that was another thing. Like knowing which voices to listen to right. and which ones not to listen to. Right. That also takes a lot of you know strength right. and um, right. intelligence. Right. And you saw like whenever he had kind of a down moment or he needed that kind of you know push, whenever he had kind of a down moment mm-hmm. and he needed kind of that push, you saw his mother was always oh, yeah, there. Yeah, he went back home. He went back home. He went back home. Yeah. 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 And I think yeah, it's so important just to see well, that really touched to me. Chicago, right. He really his home. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, as a man, especially a black Israelite man, Mm -hmm. how important do you think it is to have that type of supportive mother? 
Um, I think it's very important to have a supportive mother. I also think it's very important to have a supportive father. <laughs> and I also think it's important to have um, a, just a, a support system mm-hmm. of family. I think in, you know, in this culture, um, we always say, like, our your uh, mother and father is very important. Um, but we also know that it takes a village to raise a child, mm-hmm. right? So I, 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 I think... Wherever that support comes, um, because you can't, as if you're a child, you can't always control who your parent is. You can't right. always control who your parent is. Right. Um, but I think it's also important to understand who can you go to, to that, that can give you support. Uh, um, and I think that's more. I think that's especially true in Israel, mm-hmm. um, because we have a lot of family, and as we say, this we are one big family. So being one big family kind of gives you a lot of people um, who can help you wh- wherever you're trying to go. Um, and so I, I think if b- being an issue, if anything, we should feel um, limitless in our possibility right. because of our support system. Yeah. And like, sometimes we don't realize it. Um, but uh, and I think, you know, the world does a hell of a job of suppressing people mm-hmm. and does a hell of a job of suppressing people's like opinions, their individuality, their uniqueness mm-hmm. or even the thing that gives them power. And like with us, we know it's our God and our spirituality and the, and the culture. Um, but yeah, th- like those are definitely things that you know. I feel like, as an Israelite, we should feel like we can we can do anything. Yeah. Um, next subtopic I wanted to touch was you. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> as you mentioned before, E2K. E2K. <laughs> you're an artist out here. You're a black yeah. Israelite artist out mm-hmm. here trying to make a name for yourself. Yeah. Um, how does that feel to like kind of? It feels great. <laughs> <laughs> Live in that world, yeah. Uh, it feels. Good. I mean, it's it's hard, man. It's hard. Like mm-hmm. it's not it's not really easy. As I kind of know that, like, there's no there's no clear path. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no clear path. Mm-hmm. So I think I've been spending like the past year. Um, well, I guess I just graduated from college. Mm-hmm. Like, very, congratulations! Very recently, I think like, a, a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just graduated. So I guess now it's kind of like. I'm starting to feel like okay, I need to really like do like this music full time, and it's a different feeling like doing music full time versus like um, when you kind of do it to the side, hmm. like being a student or something like that. Um, because before I was like I'm a student and I'm a rapper, right. and now it's like I'm just a rapper, right? And so you got to walk with that confidence, and you can't really let anything like deter you because people have different opinions, you know of like what they want to hear, like right. what they want from you, what you did before, do that again. Right. But it's not really like that because I feel like music is not really something, at least for me, it's not really something that I really can control. Right. Right. It's just more so like this is just what I'm making. Like mm. This is just hard to me. Mm. I don't know. It's just tough. Like If it's tough, it's tough. You talk <laughs> about living in both worlds, the Israelite mm-hmm. world and out there in the world. Yeah. Uh, the, you know. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, outside yeah. world, outside of the, the, the found blue, blue foundation world, that you yeah. built on. Right. The mm-hmm. big, big, big world. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially concerning your last album, All is mm-hmm. Vanity, kind of just describe a little bit what the album meant to be living in those different worlds, two worlds. Oh, man. All is Vanity was, I always say it's not, it's not, it's like it was an experience. I think it's, the, it's an experience as a listener, mm-hmm. but it was also an experience in creating it. Hmm. Um, like I was in a, like, I was in like a different type of spot, I'd say. I was like, I was completely isolated from mm. everything at mm. the time. This is like when quarantine just started. Right. I was isolated from everything. Mm. And like my and the phone was just off like a lot. Like not off, maybe, maybe just dry, you know, it's mm. quarantine. Um, so I was just isolated. And I was I was I was living like in my dorm room, um, with no roommates because everyone else is gone. Mm. So like that was like and the whole campus is gone. Mm. Like I'm basically like one out of like maybe like Maybe like twenty people, like maybe total on, hmm. on the whole campus. In that space, I really kind of like it was a lot of reflection, hmm. <laughs> and I just got off of like a breakup and stuff. So hmm. it was just it was just a a big moment of like reflection. Hmm. I, I had all the time in the world to kind of just think, and so I was doing like some reading, um, some reflecting, um, and you know, and talking with you know different people, like you know my brother and stuff like that. And uh, at the time, I was doing like different like music. Um, like services for other people. Like mm-hmm. I was collabing with other artists and stuff for a bit. But then eventually when it came down to like what I wanted to do for my project, I knew that like I was like well, it's the four hundred years coming up. Right. Um and so This was back in twenty twenty. This is back in twenty twenty. Right. So I guess no it, what it had been the four hundred years already. Um but I knew like the importance of the time and of course with the whole quarantine thing, that being kind of a big 
you know, ticker mm -hmm. monument for like, oh, like what's gonna happen next? Like how is this, how is Israel, like we don't know what's gonna right. happen next. So even even in the uncertainty, I just kinda, I wanted to grab everything by the mantle and I'm like, you know what? I'm about to make an album that it's just, it's gonna be undeniably tough. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna like exclusivize it to be like, oh, only if you um, are in the Israelite culture are you gonna understand or are you going to be able to like enjoy this? Right. Like, I wanted to make something that like, is that was me and my God, hmm. right? And so like, that was like all that mattered. Hmm. Like, I didn't care about, cause that's, 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 I was alone. So that's the only thing that mattered was hmm. just me and my God. Hmm. So I just made music that represented that. And I just, but I did it to the best of my ability and I did it how I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Not based off of like any person, not any person, other, not any other person's standards. Right. And so I feel like it came out to just be something so unique and something I'm real proud of. Right. For sure. That passion, that effort definitely shows through the lyrics yeah. and the, the vibe. Because you produced it. You created the own your own beats. You mm. mastered it yourself. Mm. Like, yeah, amazing. You did it all. It. Right. You wrote the rap, lyrics, I I stuff like that. Every everything. Because, you know, it, like, it, there's always people who have their hand in it. Right. Like, right. Different, different producers or maybe I would get it heard by certain engineers. But for the most part, I'd say, like, it's like 90 percent of me wow mm. amazing mm -hmm. wow all is vanity i mean there's a song on there higher that mm. i've heard you perform and that's one of your most popular songs on there mm. what does that kind of mean to the meaning of the the um, album itself higher well higher actually it's funny higher i made before that i even had an idea of the album really like higher was one of the songs that like was already out but it just had on soundcloud mm. and sometimes I, I i just drop songs on soundcloud if i'm just feeling it at the time i'm just like I'm gonna just put this out because I just feel this emotion. Mm -hmm. And as a musician, you can't fight that. It's really hard to fight those feelings. Mm. Because yeah, you have the structure of like, okay, let's get something right, let's get a cover, let's get like yeah, and like you wanna you have you wanna do that too. But you, sometimes you just have a feeling, you just have a vibe, and you just wanna put it out right now. Right. So that's right. why I like SoundCloud. But higher came out there first. Mm. Um and this was when I was going through stuff like in my relationship and stuff. Mm. Um but then um when it came down to making the album um, my, I guess, consultants advisee, my brother, um, <laughs> he, he was like, oh, bro, that has to be the outro, that has to be the mm. outro, because it was something that really, I saw what it meant to him, and I knew what it meant for me, but I saw, uh, I saw how he related to it, and how it made him feel, mm -hmm. the whole idea of, like, higher, um, the whole idea of, like, you know, wanting to attain more, um, and also understanding that, like, this relationship with your God is that important, though, like, in order to get there, I know that it's gonna take, like, I, like, even though things aren't looking right, like I know that he got me still. I know mm -hmm. that he loved me still. But even but I still can't shake the fact that I don't feel good. You know. Right. And when you don't feel good, it's hard to do good. You right. know. So um but yeah, I think that song is kind of about trying to get out of that spot, whatever that rusty spot hmm. is, and trying to elevate. Hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. I think also. definitely a lot of people can relate to that. Mm -hmm. That feeling of there's more to achieve out there and I need the help of the God of Israel mm -hmm. and um and yeah, it's just definitely a journey. Exactly. I think your album definitely describes that to a T. Yeah, what that yeah. journey, the triumphs and the the failures of that journey, what that looks like, mm -hmm. and how to get back up and continue and just yeah, yeah having good foundation. Exactly, and yeah. I also wanted to do it like in a unique way, like in a yeah. way that represented like my generation and like the type of music that I like, right? The type of music that I listen to, like con constantly keep pushing the mantle, constantly pushing the mantle forward. You know, mm -hmm. like constantly like like trying to make change and like. I don't know, be unique and like do something no one else has done before. Right. So, yeah. So. Yeah. You definitely seem like the type of person that doesn't really put yourself in a box, and I can respect that. Yeah, can't do that. You, you like What's you said, if box? it's far, it's far. Who wants to be a mime there alone? <laughs> I'm not trying to live in a box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Exactly. I'm trying to be an eagle, you know. I'm trying to fly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a weird metaphor, but. All right, okay. <laughs> so the last segment of today's episode is called Let's Get Biblical, yo. Let's get biblical, Let's yo. get biblical. Okay. And this is my favorite part. It's okay. kind of the trivia part where you kind of guess the verse or the origin of the Bible quote or fill mm. in the blank or answer a question type of thing, and it's all biblical related. Okay. All right, you ready? Yep. Okay. Okay. So. And say. feel free to play at home too. I'd love to hear I'm nervous. You your test answers. My skills. <laughs> test, my, test my knowledge. Okay, ready? Okay. Question number one. Okay. Where can you find the name of the God of Israel? The official name of the God of Israel. 
Um, Exodus three fifteen. Yes. How'd you know? You have it memorized. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> what What is the official name of the God of Israel? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yes. Give that man a point. There we go. Okay. Second question. What is your favorite Bible verse? Ooh, that's a toughie. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to generalize a bit mm-hmm. and be like Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Aren't <laughs> Just I'm going to have to group area. that in because <laughs> I feel like I, I really relate to like the stuff that Solomon wrote. Like mm-hmm. The stuff Solomon wrote, like it got me through some hard times. So really? Like, I, yeah, I really relate to stuff. So like I can't tell you exactly which ones, mm-hmm. but like just reading through just like the wise words of Solomon. Like, right. Huge. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, okay. Third question. Okay. okay I'm going to I'm gonna give you that point. Okay. Um, because I like where that passion is coming from. Right. It's honest. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's honest. Right, right, right. You know, kind of what you're saying. Right. So and it's funny. Even the title of the project came from like reading Solomon. Really? Like, All like, his like vanity? vanity? Yeah. Oh, anyway, yeah, keep going. What was the first thing that the God of Israel, known as God Almighty, Almighty at that time, mm-hmm. created in the world when he did? Light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it oh, was this light. Is this a trick question? Or is this? Okay. okay yes, yeah. it was light. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. What is the eighth month of the Israelite calendar? Boom. Yes. There we go. <laughs> how, how are you getting these, man? Uh, I'm um, trying to chip you up here. I, I, don't, I, mean, I, don't, I just, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. If you ask me another month, I may not have known all of them, but <laughs> there's just some of them that stand out. Yeah. And Bull just always stood out because it was after after them. Oh. It just always came out like that. I see. Yeah. I see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you ready to finish this uh, sentence? Okay. Finish this verse. Okay. Question number five. Yay, do I walk through the shall- shadow of death? I was afraid of evil. Mm-hmm. But thou art with me. That rod that saith to come for me. There you go. I the table for me to turn into my enemy. Hey. I know it's in my head with oil. My I'm coming with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will go to the house of the Lord forever. There we go. Yes. <laughs> you love someone that can recite that word for word. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, well, you got all five points. Look at that. Five Look, at five. that. Look, I'm trying to stump my guest, and they have not fallen for it yet. I need to bring, bring it next time. Bring some harder fall. questions. Will <laughs> <laughs> we will not be defeated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, good. Well, it was so ha- um, awesome having you on this show today, yeah, Ezra awesome E2K. Mm-hmm. I hope that you guys check out his album, All is Vanity, on mm-hmm. all streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and check out the, the next thing that's going to come out. Very yes, soon. it's nice. EP, right? Yeah, it's okay. called uh, Alone with Anxiety. Oh, Alone with anxiety. Yeah. Ooh, what that sounds so good. Yeah. I cannot wait. Mm. I cannot wait. So definitely check E2K out mm. um, when that comes out. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, it was awesome having you guys here. Thanks for tuning in on this week's episode of For the Love of God. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in a couple weeks yeah. with a brand new guest. And right. some more Let's energy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. For the love of God. All right. For mm. the love of God. I'm just trying to get higher. I'm just trying to get higher.